Tomorrow is photo day for the Pirates All-Stars. Pedro Alvarez, Jason Grilly, along with All-Star lefty Jeff Locke, and of course three-time All-Star Andrew McCutcheon getting a chance to wear the jersey that they will be sporting on Tuesday night in New York for the Midsummer Classic. And the Pirates host the Mets for the final three games before the All-Star break. Greg Brown along with Bob Walk. And Bob, good to see that uh, Major League Baseball kind of righted a wrong in our minds. David Wright selecting Pedro Alvarez to be a part of that home run derby. It'll be a lot of fun. Yeah, I think that, uh, at least in my mind, this uh, whole episode here kind of means they need to tweak the selection process a little bit. But obviously, uh, Pedro very deserving. He's going back to his hometown, New York. And uh, the home run derby is all about those tape measure shots, the oohs and ahs from the crowd. It's all about the fans. And, and who better to hit the tape measure shots than Pedro Alvarez? And notice that bottom note, 53 home runs since May of last year, the most in the National League. Offense got a spark. Wednesday, Bob, they beat the Oakland Athletics 5 to nothing and collected 12 hits in one game. Well, what I really liked about that was that we didn't have to rely on a home run to score runs, that we were able to get a, a number of hits all in the same inning something we haven't tried in a while and, and that really always works out you hit with runners in scoring position you're going to score some runs you're going to win some ball games jose tabata trying to help the pirates win some ball games he'll be in right field for the ninth straight game his last eight ball games he's hitting at a 400 clip jose tabata and the buckos taking on the mets coming up next On Roots Sports is brought to you by Toyota. Now's the time to go places with Toyota. Visit buyatoyota.com for special offers. And by PNC for the achiever in you. Let's go, Bucks. Here at PNC Park, a little bit uh, drizzly earlier, but uh, it's like going to be rain free the rest of the way as Charlie Morton takes the mound to the Bucks, making his sixth start. Since coming off the disabled list after undergoing Tommy John's surgery, it's been a long road back for Charlie Morton and seemingly getting better each and every time out. Let's take a look at the best lineup. Eric Young will lead things off, and it's Daniel Murphy and David Wright with Ike Davis hitting cleanup. Marlon Byrd leads the team with 15 homers, 
49 RBIs for the veteran. Kirk Neuenweiss is in center field. Anthony Recker behind the plate. Omar Quintanilla at shortstop. Jeremy Hefner on the mound. Take a look at Charlie's numbers brought to you by Chevrolet. As uh, Greg said, you can see just making his sixth star of the season. Kind of getting things underway. Been pitching very well. And in fact, to tell his last start at the ERA down in the twos. Everything uh, seems to be looking great as far as health wise. The uh, velocity, all that sort of thing, uh, right back where it should be. And we'll take a look at the defense behind Charlie Morton. In the outfield, it's Andrew McCutcheon. He's flanked by Starling Marte and Jose Tabata. Infield, critically important with Charlie Morton on the mound. Alvarez Barmas on the left side. Mercer again at second with Garrett Jones at first and Russell Martin behind the plate. Jordy Mercer getting another start at second base with uh, Neil Walker on the disabled list, but on the DL earlier in the week. We'll have uh, the All Star week off and uh, hoping to get back at series against the Washington Nationals, which will follow the first uh, road series in Cincinnati after the All Star break. Clint Barmas has been swinging the bat a little bit better. So it's the real reason you see Barmas at short and Mercer at second. In a way, it's like Barmas has replaced Walker yeah. in that rotation, kind of, or not the rotation, in the lineup. You kind of look at it in that way. So the Mets, who've won four in a row and feeling better about themselves at 40 and 48, Pirates won three of four in New York earlier this season. And we're underway. It's a strike on Eric Young Jr. Talking to Terry Collins, the Mets skipper, he says one of the reasons the club is playing better. Uh, Eric Young Jr. has been a spark plug at the top of the order. And right away, singles to center. Just acquired last month. And he's made a difference. Playing in his 22nd game. Lead off single. Right away, it kind of highlights something about Charlie. He's going to get a lot of ground balls. It's hard to control where they're at. And uh, hopefully, it's one of those nights that the ground balls are going in the direction of the infield. The infield has to play well on the night Charlie pitches. Daniel Murphy takes ball one. Six homers, 38 runs batted in. Since the beginning of last month, hitting just 225 is Daniel Murphy. To pay attention to Young, he has stolen 15 bases this season at 21 tries. Skipper Terry Collins has his club at uh, 23 and 21 on the road this year. Ball one strike to count. Larry Vanover marking out the balls and strikes. Brian Gorman, the crew chief at first base, with Manny Gonzalez at second, and Tony Randazzo, the third base umpire. One ball, one strike on the second baseman, Daniel Murphy, and he pops this one out. Marte. One out. Uh, let's listen to the greeting David Wright gets, even though uh, he did ask Pedro Alvarez. Third, third baseman, number five, David Wright. Also, they haven't uh, made up yet. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, they, they realize it, it's hard to take something back, you know? That's a, leave it at that. And. The fans are responding to it. 11 game hitting streak for David Wright, hitting 308 for the season. The team's captain, 30 year old native of Norfolk, Virginia. Third in the league in on base percentage. Runner goes, taken for a ball, throw is strong, and they got him again. Russell Martin nails another base runner. The sniper. They don't get away from it. Quick 
Quick tag. Now right between the 22s, wasn't well. Yep. Laid it on him. Great shot. Easy. HGH cam. Very nice shot. One ball, one strike now. Russell Martin throws out yet another runner. For Martin, this is 18th runner he has thrown out. Matches him. Nick Hundley for the league lead. Ball hit in the air to shallow center. Second baseman out. McCutcheon in, and McCutcheon will put it away. A leadoff hit, and the fly out. The caught stealing another fly ball out, and the Pirates will come to bat. NC Park. Lineup for the Bucks brought to you by Toyota. Starling Marte ready to step in to lead things off. He's been doing a fine job over the last few weeks in that leadoff position. And Jose Tom in the last seven games batting at a 423 clip. Andrew McCutcheon hits third. Pedro Alvarez cleanup. And it's Russell Martin and Garrett Jones. Jordy Mercer, Clint Barmas, Charlie Morton round out the starting nine against Jeremy Hefner. Marte steps in. Batting average on the season. Approaching a 290 mark. Run. Take a look at Half's numbers on the year that uh, ERA at 339 could actually be much smaller than that. He has uh, pitched extremely well ever since the first uh, week of June. Best uh, ERA in the league at uh, the run of weeks. First pitch up and in. Jones got underneath the hands. Thank goodness. It's it to the shortstop. Quintanilla. Goes out Marte. One down as uh, folks continue to head over the Clemente Bridge for what should be. Capacity crowds each of the next three. A lot of people trusting in the skipper, the Pirates, to uh, lead this club toward a winning season. Jose Tabata hitting 306. Run. Clint, really enjoying uh, sure what he's been saying this season. To say easy to please, hard to satisfy. That's his mantra. Well, fouled out of play, 0 and 2. That's a, a good one. I like that one a lot. Don't ever be satisfied. Always get better, always improve. One, two count on top of that. Good to see him hit a ball into the gap the other day. That double against the A's. 
Bounce to the shortstop. No, Wright will pick it off and throw late to first. An infield hit. Jose makes use of those hoppers, doesn't he? Yes, he does. A major weapon for Tabata as a rookie. Three or four hits a week he gets uh, on these just the high bouncing balls in the infield. Not as many of those the last couple of seasons where he was uh, obviously far from 100%, but as a rookie, 31 infield hits to lead the Pirates three years ago. Tom. He continues to hit the way he is and continues to play out in right field. A couple pretty good table setters uh, in front of Kutch. Marlon Bird out in right. And Pedro. Two outs, and here comes Pedro Alvarez, who has an eight game hitting streak going. Third baseman, number 24, Pedro Alvarez. Public address announcer Tim Tobacco announcing uh, the new participant in the home run derby. It's Carlos Gonzalez. He's not going to play. The Barrel League leaders, uh, home run leaders in the National League. But Dominic Brown won't be there either. No. But nobody has a better home run ratio in the league than Alvarez. Homers every 12.7 at bats. Nearing the wall, and it's gone! How do you like them big apples for the big ball? That's the way you, you answer, right? And, uh, you get snubbed. That's coming town, first pitch he sees. And to the bullpen. Into the bullpen with a big ball. Well, again, showing that incredible power. Just reaching down. Putting that ball over the center field fence into the bullpen. And just to, he has that, that power where it, it looks like he's kind of flicks the ball. Ball down the right at the knees. So you, you like the kind of pitch is you know, downstairs at the knees and into the bullpen. Velocity he can uh, generate with the head of that bat. That's why not only is he hit a home runs, but at times he hits those tape measure shots. A great bat speed. Martin shows bunt two and one. So 24 home runs now. One back of Carlos Gonzalez of the Rockies for the National League lead. Captain David Wright, who called Alvarez through a proper channels yesterday. And so Carlos Gonzalez pulled himself from the home run derby. And again, it wasn't a solo shot home run. Tom it up. Uh, you know, getting on base regularly now, he'd set the table so that there was somebody out there for uh, Pedro to knock in. There's Jose getting a, a drink. He continues to get on base, and that's his job, hitting in front of those guys. He's getting a, an extended look out in right field. And, and uh, as you said the other day, you know, Clint told him, hey, you're going to be out there. you gotta, you got to go. you got to show us. Good start to the game. Hefner, who has now given up 15 home runs this season, strikes out Martin following the Pedro Alvarez dinger. 24 on the year for number 24, and it's 2 nothing Bucks.
Pedro Alvarez homers again. I'm Robbie Inspikowski. Well, Pedro Alvarez, one of the four Pirates All-Stars, headed to City Field in just a couple days. And today, when they got into the Pirates Clubhouse, they found an extra jersey in there. They're All-Star jerseys. The bright orange jerseys is today. Alvarez, Grilly, Locke, and McCutcheon all posed for some still photos that are going to be used uh, for promotional reasons for this uh, Tuesday's All-Star game. And I asked those guys about wearing a major McCutcheon. His reaction was simple. Well, um... They're bright, and they're really, really orange. But Jeff Locke, uh, he was asked if it kind of has set in a little bit now that he sees his number 49 All-Star jersey hanging in his locker. He said, no, not really. I have one more start to go. But really, it doesn't make much difference. But I think, um, Greg, you might agree there might be a different opinion when he sets a foot in City Field Monday night for the Home Run Derby and Tuesday for the All-Star game that things might feel just a little bit different wearing that orange jersey. Well, I would think so, Robbie, and uh, I know, Bob, you've been asked it a lot. Every time somebody goes to the All-Star game, we ask you what it is like, and you can uh, speak to it better than anybody uh, up here in the booth, certainly, as to what that is like. And when you're first told you're going to the All-Star game, do you feel a lot different once you get into that clubhouse and then onto that field for an All-Star game? Yeah, I think you do. Different uh, feeling. It, it, it definitely is. I think it starts to uh, set in, at least for myself, when... You, we were on the road. We were in Los Angeles. When all of a sudden you leave the team, the team is going and flying home, and, and you're not with them. You're you're going on a flight to the All Star game. Uh, I mean, I had Oral Hershiser sitting, uh, you know, just right there across from me. I mean, that's when it started to sit, you know, sink in. Okay, this is it. I'm I'm an All Star, and, and that I think will probably happen a little bit with Locke uh, when he flies to New York on that short flight. He's going to do a lot of thinking about that. That, wow, this is it. This is uh, that's a great point. It is. Different. You're, you're going away from the club, yeah. and he'll be on that flight with uh, the three other All Stars, which will be helpful, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. He's not going to be flying to New York on his own. Walk to uh, Ike Davis to start the second. Yeah, Jason, cut, cut will be, be able to show him the ropes. He's yeah. been there a couple times. I think about how he cuts is going to be like the tour guide, isn't yeah. he? Yeah. You know, really think about the emotions yeah. he's going to have. Yeah. At, at, you know, being uh, well into his 30s, making that trip. What if uh, it really ends up? And already there's hot <laughs> sellers, of course, in the uh, Pirates Clubhouse store. Unveiled today, the uh, Mets colors with the uh, National League. Those, I believe, that'll be the uniform that Pedro Alvarez wears in the home run derby. I like the batting stars practice. inside yeah. the, uh, the field of blue for the numbers. Remember the Pirates Very unis nice. or the, the National League unis are bright gold here when the All-Star game was played at PNC Park. But what will it be like for Grilly to if uh, it's already emotional that as you say the flight then when he arrives imagine if he gets in a ball game. There's no scenario I can see with Jeff Locke appears in the game. Just the fact that he's there is going to be a great experience. But for a guy like uh, really as you say all that he has been through. Well they can pitch. Uh, I mean he, he, he could. He's allowed to pitch. Oh, allowed, allowed to. Pitch. Yeah. I started pitch Sunday and, and pitched in a game Tuesday. I just done. I just think things are so different. In this day and age I can't I cannot imagine and you're talking about. In the Pirates and the Pirates aren't unlike a lot of other clubs uh, who uh, Charlie Morton for example pitched two innings was shut down and didn't pitch another game for a week. I mean you can see case after case where Pirates are extra careful with their pitchers. Bounce to Pedro Alvarez can they turn that into two against Marlon Bird they do. Big weapon for Charlie uh, all the time is that double play ball cleans up a lot of mistakes. They get the leadoff hitter aboard and he just gets a ground ball to somebody and they're erased. One hopper. He's turned by Mercer. Charlie uh, wondering about the bunt. Well, I think, you know what he was doing right there. I think he was telling. Uh, Telling Charlie that I'm going to be back off the line. If there's any kind of bunt, you're going to have to help help me out. Bunt. Newenheis hitting 213, couple of homers. 
That strike one now. Pedro really moved way back. In the, the shift position now. Let's see where Pedro went. He's out of the picture as far as being a third baseman. But uh, he wanted to make sure that Charlie knew where he was going to be playing and why. Tap toward Mercer. And on the first. Walk doesn't hurt. Charlie Morton gets the ground ball double play and a chopper to the right side. It's 2 0 Bucks. And some belly fireworks after the game tomorrow night. It starts at 7:15. Fireworks to follow. It's also at Eaton Park Scratch and Win Saturday. All fans get a scratch card. Good for prizes from Eaton Park. For tickets, go to Pirates.com. In two of the three-game series, Pirates and the Mets. AJ Burnett on the hill for Pittsburgh against Carlos Torres. Matt Harvey will not pitch in this series. Rumblings at their. Hoping uh, Matt Harvey starts the All Star game Tuesday in New York. One and one on Garrett Jones. Terry Collins will be a part of the coaching staff for Bruce Bochy. Hit hard but foul. That's Rick Sofield. There Jones trying to get that bat going once again. Just one hit in uh, his last 13 at bats. Chases Hefner. It's a second strikeout. One out bottom of the second. Some uh, tweets. Hashtag Bucks Booth. Pedro Alvarez. Just giving David Wright a preview of what he'll see at the home run derby. 24 for 24. David Wright is wrong. Pedro with the home run. The first at bat, El Toro clutch. And again, uh, hashtag Bucks Booth to pass along your tweets. Thanks to AT&T. Jordy Mercer at the plate. Mercer hitting 261. Three straight games now at second base. His 12th start at that position this season. Mercer was one for four on Wednesday. As the Bucks collected 12 hits in that five nothing shutout, 13 shutouts for the Pirates pitching staff, the most in the majors, for the team that boasts the lowest ERA in the major leagues at 309. That's past 
third foul. Still nothing in two on Jordy Mercer. Now, Greg, you were talking about how pitching has changed uh, as far in relation to the All Star game, but how reluctant teams are to let you pitch if you pitch if you start a game Sunday and that, that sort of thing. Well, I was just thinking about uh, and, and this. And I've seen this happen on teams I was on before and I and on other teams that, I, that we were playing as your starters would actually move the starters that weren't going to pitch anymore until the all star break would move to the bullpen and, and pitch out of the bullpen yeah. the last couple of days. That's a great question. I'm going to ask. Uh, I mean, you've never. I mean, when's the last time right. we've seen that happen? And, but that used to happen, and a couple of times when I was in the bullpen, I actually got popped out of my long man spot because the starter would come down and, and pitch in my spot and get out there. And that's, you know, it's just another example of the way, you know, the, the way pitchers are treated differently as far as how many innings they get, how many days rest they have to have in between. You know, every time they throw a baseball, you don't see starting pitchers you know, going to the uh, the bullpen. Like for instance, this weekend, uh, you would have a, a couple of starters out there available that aren't going to pitch again before the break. For the break. Why do you think that is? Just routine? No, I think it's the way, like you were talking, yeah. it's the way pitching is uh, or the way teams treat their pitchers uh -huh. a much different way and, and much more conservatively. Just another one of those examples. Francisco Liriano, who knows if? Uh, well, he's got he's got the numbers, that's for sure. Yeah. If a pitcher were not able to pitch on uh, Tuesday night in terms of injuries, uh, Liriano could be a guy that would replace one or more. Still don't know about. Uh, the catching situation as we head toward the final weekend. Yadier Molina is playing sparingly. And you and I talked about this earlier in the week. It's hard to imagine a scenario that Molina plays at all on Tuesday. So they have to have another catcher. There's a drive hit deep by Clint Barnes toward the wall. And a nice running catch there by Young. Eric Young Jr. Going deep into left center field to rob Barmas of extra bases. Outstanding play by the left fielder Eric Young Jr. Tradition of Sunday night classics, Shell versus Caputo on Sunday at 8 o'clock here on Root Sports. Shell versus Caputo Sunday night classics. Again, it's Sunday at 8. Only on Root Sports, you'll hear from all the particulars of that classic encounter on Sunday night classics. 
And it's a great night to take in uh, a ball game from the Allegheny. And a lot of, a lot of youngsters on hand. Anthony Recker is at the plate. The catcher. Allentown, Pennsylvania native. Anthony Recker claimed off waivers from the Cubs last October. One and two. Bottom third of the batting order for the Mets. Mets as a team batting average is 235. That's the second lowest average in the league. Though they have scored 20 more runs than the Pirates. Pirates team batting average of 243. You have to tip your cap to that man. I think he has done just a tremendous job under crazy circumstances the last couple of years. And a swing and a miss for the strikeout. Charlie running the ball upstairs by somebody. I don't see that a lot. Right. Wasn't much of a, a sinker here. It looked like four seamer to me. And a good one. Start number six for Charlie Morton this season in the big leagues. The other way for Quintanilla, and it is a foul ball, just foul. Boy, the third base coach, I'm not sure. We saw Tim Tuffle down there. Tim Tuffle arguing with Tony Randazzo briefly, it looks like. Tuffle had as good of an angle, you would think, as Tony Randazzo. He's still arguing a little bit. Can't beat this angle. That's foul. Foul, foul ball. A great angle. Great view of it. Good call. Yep. The proper call. That's solid work. Mm -hmm. So Quintanilla. The, switch, the uh, left handed hitting shortstop. I think 246. Thanks. One ball and one strike on Omar Quintanilla. Last eight games, hitting just a buck 88. And two and one. Jam packed PNC Park. Not going to be many seats left tonight. A lot of gold. T shirts. Great sight. Should be a lot of fun this weekend. I mentioned A.J. Burnett tomorrow night against Carlos Torres, and then Sunday, Pirate All Star Jeff Locke is scheduled to start against Dylan G. And three and two. Keeping the ball down, except for that one pitch got away from him, up and away. That's on the hands for an easy third out. Second out. Second out, sorry. Quintanilla grounds to Garrett Jones for the second out. On a free shirt Friday. A lot of gold. Pitcher Jeremy Hefner leads off. Hefner is 0 for 25 at the plate this season. So that was kind of the last out. What's that? So that was kind of the last out of the inning. Why? 0 for 25. 
I mean, that's the innings over. Oh yeah, yeah, you were right. Oh, don't get yeah. There's no question. No, you were right on. No, no. You know, uh, you, you were, were not waiting. wrong. I can't believe you weren't waiting for that. You were not wrong. How are you not waiting for that? That's that's routine, isn't it? Just ban the DH. You have no problems. Well, that's a nice new sign. That is, man. That that took some work. Well, the old, the old sign fell fell into the crowd. Remember? Oh, no. Hey, look! Well, that's that, the last out. Well, that's the third out. We're going to take it to a break. Now we can break it. Baseball on Root Sports is brought to you by Barrel Automotive. We're driven to be better. And by Levin Furniture and the all-new Levin Mattress Stores. For a great deal on a new bed, shop Levin's. Let's go Bucks. MLB.com at bat is the number one source for live baseball everywhere you go. Available for iPhone, iPad, Android, and BlackBerry 10. At bat delivers Pirates baseball with live audio, pitch tracking, stats, news, highlights, and more. Text at bat to 31826 or visit pirates.com for details. Right. Charlie Morton at the plate. All right, Chuck. Time to get ahead. Charlie's 0 for 5. Way up in the club level. Don't like his chances now. 0 and 2. Hefner probably hook him here. He did. He hung with it. Quintanilla. You could see that break coming in. Kind of a little bit like the view that Charlie had. So a little further back, he got more time to look at it. But he hung in there and able to. Put it in play, and that's the main thing. You're starting pitcher, get the ball put in play, and you've done your job. Sometimes they'll find a hole. Two nothing bucks. You see that? Uh... You hot? I don't know that we've seen that recently, have we? Luxury cruises. It's been down for repairs, maybe. Oh, maybe. It's a nice looking boat. It sure is. That's the third and off the glove of David Wright, but what a recovery! What a recovery by David Wright. Stayed with it. And the ball is hit sharply. Right there. Uh, Played it off the heel, heel of the glove. He just knocked it straight in the air. That's a nice looking play right there. 
Two time gold lover David Wright. Staying with it. Two down. And here is Jose Tabata who reached on the infield single and was aboard when Alvarez homered. The Pirates today picked up a first baseman outfielder from the Orioles, Russ Kanzler. He was a former draft pick of the Chicago Cubs back in 2004. He hit 276, 11 homers, 49 RBIs at AAA Norfolk in the uh, Orioles organization. The plan is to have him play a couple different positions at AAA Indianapolis, and Clint Hurdle said he was traded to help the big league club. Ball bounced to short on the first, and the Pirates go down in order. Nothing, nothing, or rather, two nothing Pirates through three. To the fourth inning. Tonight's AGH Sports Medicine Injury Update. Jared Hughes, 15 day DL, right shoulder inflammation. He's rehabbing down in Florida. Injury Update brought to you by our friends at Allegheny Sports Medicine, official medical provider of the Pirates. And I would think not too long after the All Star break, uh, Jared Hughes could be returning to the Bucks. Both Coast Lake Pirates got to be a little warm out of Pirate City nowadays. You would think. So the top of the order, Eric Young began the ball game with a base hit up the middle, but was caught stealing by Russell Martin. Remind me that when Jared gets back, ask him how hot yeah. it was down there. Matt Harvey has been bothered by a little bit of a blister issue, so uh, they're going to hold him out this weekend, and that would. More than likely enable him to start Tuesday night in New York. Hot. Good. Glad they're doing that. I'd rather him beat the American League than no, us. That's fine. Yeah. He, uh, help get uh, home yeah, field advantage, exactly. right? Exactly. You know, beat the American League. Yep. Not us. Nice little play by Jordy Mercer. And we're seeing the ground balls now after at the first inning. The ground single by Young, two fly ball outs. And get works. ahead in the count. He's yeah. keep the ball down for the most part. It's it just looks like Charlie right now. That's when he's at his best when he's ground chuck. And getting ah. that first pitch strike over again to Daniel Murphy. Another strike. And to left. Marte over trying. Huh, that guy ended up with it. 
Just back from the concession stand. Didn't drop anything. Oh no, that wasn't that close at all. Was in there a couple rows. <laughs> Marte was going to give it a go though, wasn't he? Yeah. Had that foot in the padding. Again, trying to work upstairs. A two strike pitch up. Working fast, throwing strikes, and changing speeds. A little breaking ball. Facing left handed hitter Daniel Murphy. Lefty's batting, lefty's batting 278 against Morton so far this season. There's a chopper. Here comes Barmas. Another ground ball out. Two up and two down for Charlie Morton. As uh, David Wright steps to the plate to a chorus of boos from this. Sell out crowd. Hey, you know what I like too, Greg, is in between his first at bat and this at bat, they put up on the scoreboard that he had changed his mind <laughs> and, and put Alvarez on yeah. the team. But nobody really cares. No. I, I like that. <laughs> they applauded that Alvarez was yeah. Oh, yeah, going to be in the home run derby on Monday night, but uh, yeah, it didn't change their attitude about David Wright. They're still thinking of his original decision. And a liner to left center field. Marte over. Right headed to second base. There's nobody nobody second. at second base. Nobody was standing at second. Well, it's a double basically uncontested. Well, you know, Mercer, uh, not a lot of experience at second base, more of a shortstop. And he was moving over to get into a double cutoff situation for third. Uh, I, I'm going to have to disagree with his assessment, but there's no way in a million years that's ever going to be a triple. So why why are they lining up for third? The question is, was it going to be a double? Mike Davis takes ball one. And, uh, you certainly don't need a double relay. From left center, left center field to third with Marte throwing the ball. You don't need any kind of a relay. He's going to throw at the third base from there. That's one they'll talk about, I'm sure. And uh, if there would have been somebody at second, eh, it might have been a contested uh, double. Looked like uh, it was a possibility. Falls behind Ike Davis, three and zero. He walked Davis on four pitches to lead off the second. Ike Davis recalled from the minor leagues a week ago from Las Vegas. Spent three weeks down there. Three and one. Davis, who essentially. Spent uh, each of the previous three seasons in the big leagues. Bit of a surprise that uh, he was optioned to the minors after struggling mightily. First couple months, bouncing ball, and even though Morton fell behind, three and zero on the three one pitch, he gets Davis Davis to bounce to Mercer, ending the top of the fourth.
PNC Park. Join us this Sunday, 135. Buckos Mets and all kids 14 and under take home a tumbler cup just like this one. Thanks to Mrs. T's pierogies. Come early for the number one Cochran Family Fun Zone on Federal Street and stay after the game. All youngsters can run the bases. For tickets, go to Pirates.com. I can see myself signing that tumbler cup 20 years from now. Yep. Part of the giveaway from the auction the other night was the uh, Bob Walk mug from the 94 All-Star game. We just had Sangi up here to sign the bat. Yep. I think we have all the, the pieces collected now. Just need to get the winner up yep. here to claim it. Yep. McCutcheon fly to right his first time. It's Jeremy Hefner. Hefner has been pitching extremely well. Bob mentioned this at the top. Hefner really a close second behind Matt Harvey in terms of this starting staff. He picked up the win against the Brewers last time out. Seven innings, a run, two hits. Struck out a career high tying eight. Walked just one. Since June the 4th, he leads the majors with a 164 ERA. Yeah, he certainly a yeah, did something that at the time that changes year around. Fly ball toward center fielder Neuenheis. Well, let's send it down to Robbie Insmikowski, who might have more on this uh, Jeremy Hefner. Yeah, you look at Hefner, Greg. You just mentioned his numbers since June 4th and how fantastic he's been. Well, leading into that, he was 0-5 with an ERA of four and a half over his first seven starts and struggling. And when he threw his bullpens between starts, the last couple pitches he would throw, he would mess around and kind of do a Luis Tion style where he would kind of turn his back all the way around, kind of like how Johnny Cueto does a little bit. And his pitching coach, Dan Worthen, noticed that. He said, hey, that might be something you might want to try during a game. Maybe that will help your delivery a little bit. Ever since then, he's been incorporating into his delivery. Where right here, you'll see tries not as pronounced as Tion, but he tries to get at least one back pocket to reach third base to spin around. And that apparently has made a ton of difference mechanically in his turnaround to his season, Greg and Bob. Bob, what do you think? A little deception well, it, there? Yeah, it's kind of like what we see from uh, Locke. Mm -hmm. And Locke got that little bit little of a turn. turn. Not, not like quite a bit. I mean, you can see. He's the full turn. Yeah, yeah, like Tion used to. Like, you know, several guys over the years have, have done, but. You're trying to get that timing and that hip rotation, and that, that that's what all the the wind up is all about, anyway. And that uh, seems to help him, and he gets that little extra turn, so that when he when the shoulder comes around, the hips rotate, everything is in time with the arm coming through. It's just uh, almost identical to the the hitting stuff that uh, you hear hitting coaches talk about, and regular players talk about. Now keeping that front side closed and keeping the bat through the, the hitting zone. You're trying to keep your arm through that, well, for lack of a better word, that pitching zone. So you get that little bit of a turn, get your hip toward home plate. That's another reason why some guys, they don't want to be real quick home. You know, like we talk about AJ not being real quick to the plate when there's runners on. Because you lose that little bit of a hip turn if you're trying to be real fast. And it, that also, what Robbie was talking about, highlights the importance for starting pitchers uh, to have that time in the bullpen uh, in between starts to kind of mess with little things like that. You and I were having a discussion about this, I think, a couple of weeks ago about guys in the bullpen not really having that luxury to do that so sort of thing. You know, they're up, they're warming up. Relievers. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They, they, they can't really ever have that, that luxury to go to the bullpen kind of mess around with different deliveries. Shop to David Wright. And on the first to get Russell Martin. So the Pirates go down one, two, three, and boy, Hefner has given up just two hits. The Alvarez two run homer in the first.
From uh, Make a Wish was our honorary bat boy, 13 years old from Erie, PA. His mom, Charlene, his dad, Mike, are here, and he brought out the lineup card. And uh, you have to really credit Nick for putting this particular lineup together. He batted, he went to Clint Hurdle. He said, I'd like uh, Alvarez to hit fourth tonight. Tabata to hit second. And here we are. Tabata hits the infield single. And Alvarez hits the, the home run. So, Nick, a great job with that. Yeah, that was yeah. an, an awesome uh, lineup you put yeah. together. And, and Greg and I really want to thank you for that. It makes our job a lot easier when things go smoothly like that on the field. Pirate fans, Nick, want to thank you for, for having Alvarez hit cleanup. He yeah. says you're welcome. Having a good time tonight? Yeah. <laughs> Nick, right, Nick just between innings was drawing on the on Bob's telestrator, making the, the gypsies in the trailer crazy with the drawing he was having. Drawing some nice uh, nice birds out there. Yeah. Of course, the high mom. I like yeah. that too. So uh, great to have Nick here as our guest. Boy, he's had a busy, busy day. Uh, starting this afternoon, uh, he was given a, a personalized uh, black jersey that he's wearing, a uniform, pants, uh, Nike custom made. Kutch sneakers, Andrew McCutcheon sneakers. He met uh, Andrew McCutcheon. Ball hit in the air. Toward right, Tabata. Uh -oh. Whoops, say, Mercer says, all right, I'll do it this way. Yeah, somebody needed to, uh, well, Tabata needed to take charge of that one. I wonder if Tabata lost that up there in that gray sky. And that's his ball, but Mercer had to make the fine over the shoulder catch. I think Tabata looking down a couple of times at Mercer. Great job by Jordy Mercer, and that is typical Mercer, isn't it? Just do the job. Yeah. Just professionally head out there to shallow right field and didn't hear Tabata call for it, so make the over the shoulder catch on the Marlin Bird pop up. Jordy Mercer, he is. Becoming quite a nice story for the 2013 Pirates. Kirk Newen Heiss. Been a lot of great stories on this mm -hmm. team. And Mercer just uh, one of them. I mean, it's just a, it's a almost a storybook year right here for the Pirates. With all these guys coming through, the coming of age, at the same time, putting in these good seasons. Hard. Pitching has just been outstanding. Morton coming back from his surgery now, and he's. Fit right back into their rotation as a major contributor. And Pedro, obviously, uh, really uh, the, the engine driving that offense right now. Here, Cole's been a great addition to the yeah, staff. Talking about him ever since uh, he was drafted by the Pirates, about the help he's going to give us, and now here he is doing a good job. In on him, popped it up, weakly to short. And let's check out the head and shoulders uh, season of the whiff. These strikeouts. Or let's make it singular. This well, it did start out too well. Got the fastball inside, but Charlie didn't care. Comes right back at him, throwing strikes. And Upstairs with a strike three fastball. We've seen that several times tonight. Charlie adding a little something to uh, to his repertoire tonight. That was against this man, Anthony Recker, who hits this one the other way toward Tabata. Not going to get it. Up against the wall. Tabata gets to it nicely. He'll gun toward second. And whoa, Recker puts on the brakes as Tabata rifles one to Barmas. Tabata was a uh, guest on the pregame for the radio today, and he was talking about how he's learned to play this right field, the short wall, and takes pride in uh, in doing just this, keeping guys that hit the ball over his head to a single. He has really adjusted well to the right field after playing left when he first got up here in the big leagues. And as we talked about a lot, Greg, he has always idolized as a, a lot of the, the Latin outfielders, Roberto Clemente, and he knows he's got that special feeling standing in the right field wearing that pirate uniform. The 21's right behind him to remind him all the time. Yeah, 
and hard. Nice backhand play. There's Mercer again. For the final out, I want to thank uh, Nick Hederick. Great job, Nick. Make a wish. Two nothing bucks. Presents the road ahead for the Buccos against the Mets. Carlos Torres for New York tomorrow night against A.J. Burnett. And then Sunday afternoon, final game before the All-Star break. Dylan G. against Jeff Locke. Road ahead for the Bucks. Heading toward the end of the first half of the season. A.J. Burnett. Foregoing the rehab assignment and uh, doing just fine his last time out. Five innings work. This uh, first start in a month. Anxious to see how AJ Burnett performs tomorrow night against the Mets. Garrett Jones struck out in the second, facing Jeremy Hefner, and just gets under that one. Way up there, can't it's shallow it. right. No, I can't do it. So. <laughs> Yeah, tough, tough. I thought he could yeah, see. I understand. It. Hey, happy birthday to our technical direct, our technical director Chuck Whitlock's two kids, Colton turned five yesterday, and Raylan turns two today. How about that? Happy birthday, our TD Chuck Whitlock's two kids. Future Great TDs. Kids. Yep. All Star Game Tuesday night. Strike on Jordy Mercer. He bounced to short in the second. Uh, we're looking forward to this uh, weekend, of course, the three before the break. The Pirates looking for at least a couple W's, perhaps, against the Mets before going into the break. And it's hard not to look forward to. The second half home schedule is a line drive caught by Ike Davis. Don't you wonder, Bob, what that uh, series against the Cardinals will be like? That's the first home series after the break at the end of this month, a five game series starting Monday night, July 29th. There's a doubleheader on Tuesday afternoon, the 30th, another night game on Wednesday, the 31st, and a night game on August the 1st. Oh, it'll be great, that's for sure. Go to pirates.com and check out the remaining games on the home schedule. Those Cardinals, by the way, eked out a win against the Cubs. Cubs won last night's game, but the Cardinals win this afternoon. And so Pirates will need a W to stay just a game back of the Redbirds in the Central. One thing that I don't want to hear about this year, though, is the schedule being favorable. No. Nothing. I don't want to hear that. Exactly right. 
No more. Every series is a, against a tough opponent, as we found out in Chicago. Yep. And as the Cardinals found out, Cardinals uh, again lost last night to the Cubs. Didn't they lose a series uh, to Houston too? Didn't they? I think it was Houston. I think they did. Yeah. Ball bounced toward third. Nice little pickup again by David Wright. David Wright flashing that gold glove at third. The Pirates go down in order. Baseball on Route Sports is brought to you by Day Automotive. We're going to make your day. Let's go, Bucks. And yeah, let's check out our Day Automotive Day in Pirates history. July 12, 1997, Francisco Cordova and Ricardo Rincon threw a combined 10 inning no hitter against the Astros at Three Rivers. Only combined extra knowing no hitter in Major League history. Thanks, Day Automotive. We're going to make your day. The last four no hitters by Pirates pitchers that combined no no by Cordoba and Rincon against Houston. Oh, they were coming fast and furious there for a while. <laughs> yeah. John Candelaria. Seven year period had three of them. Doc Ellis against the Padres. Bob Moose, 1969 against these New York Mets. We had Domani Sanguine up in the booth uh, recently to sign that bet. He uh, was the battery mate that day against the Mets as Jeremy Hefner grounds out right away. One down. Charlie Morton has had to be sharp tonight because Hefner giving up just the two run homer has retired 13 straight. Morton has allowed only three hits. One of them to Eric Young Jr. to start the game. Sea Rage is happy. Sea Rage. Get out ahead again. Another strike. Ten outs reported via the ground ball tonight. For Charlie Morton. And another strike. Keeping the chart. Just got a piece of it. As Neil Huntington reminded us earlier this spring that if the Pirates got the Charlie Morton from 2011, the majority of that season, what an addition he would be to this rotation. And he does appear to be getting better each and every start. 
and maybe gaining even more confidence. He has said to a degree he feels like he's still kind of in the, the rehab mode. Just 13 months removed from that Tommy John ligament replacement surgery. Well, Greg, in a, in a, in a, in a way, just passed Alvarez toward left. Here comes Marte. Oh, He's going to gun toward second base. No, didn't get him, but what a play Marte made to make that that close. That was amazing. That it could be that close on somebody that can run as fast as Young. That's one of the best plays you'll ever see. Out that wasn't yeah. recorded. Yeah. This won't get much play, but it should. It was just a, a jam shot that just tucked inside the chalk. And, and look, the ball is going to kick way over there, far into foul territory. Boy, was that close. Daniel Murphy. Well, I was about to, to say, but I, you can see some reasons why Morton may even may. And, and this is it's always a maybe, but Marte up that. He could even be better than he was in 2011 because of some different things he's doing now that I didn't see before. He's been throwing a, a real good curveball to the back foot of the lefties. Uh, it, it, is he going to be able to continue that? Who knows? And then tonight we're seeing him get swings and misses from lefties and righties on some fastballs, two strike pitches up above the letters. It's not just, okay, sinker, sinker, sinker. This is what I got. Now, can he make all this work together and still throw strikes? That's you know, something that we'll have to wait and see about. It. It's a little bit different than the Charlie we saw in 11. That's my opinion. Hard. Strike three and one. Murphy taking all the way. A one out double for Eric Young on a very close play and you, you wonder had the second base umpire Manny Gonzalez called out. Young would Young have even argued. Just a spectacular play by Starling Marte. Now it's three and two. Take a look how close it was. Nice super slow-mo. The HGH camp. Tag on if he popped up off the pace. Close at second, young second hit. Marte gunning the one hop strike to second. Murphy was ahead of the count three and oh, now it's three and two. He's flied out to left and bounced to short. David Wright on deck in a two nothing game. Rounded right side. Mercer, what a play on the first! Jordy Mercer does it again. These kind of plays that really come in handy all the time. But when Charlie's on the mound, you get a lot of opportunities to do this sort of thing. He's going to get all those ground balls. And the uh, infield has to be up to the test. And when they are, when they're making plays like this behind Charlie, and Charlie's throwing the ball over the plate with consistency, throwing strikes, going at the hitters, you're going to have a good game. Uh, always important, but it's uh, incredibly important. Chuck's out there. Shallow right field. David Wright will bring home a run. Oh, look at that ball. Almost came to a stop when it hit the ground. Hit the absolute jam shot. Two jam shots this inning. Got the Mets a run. 44th RBI for Wright. His second hit of the night. That ball just ate him up. The ball when it hits, it looks like a Steve Glass wedge. Huh. So they have scored and 
It's now a one run game. No matter let Ike Davis. Let him run. He's on peak. He has 14 steals. He's only been caught twice. See his eyes? Yeah. He's looking to run on a breaking ball. He wants to look in and see if he can see the two. See if he peaks again. Not, not that time. Tapper foul. If you know you have a runner that likes to peek in and try to check out the sign so he can run an off speed pitch. And the way you combat that is you got to throw over to first base once or twice before you come to a stretch as you're looking in for the sign and the catcher starts dropping signs turn and throw right then try to catch him looking in instead of watching you. All you need is just a blink of an eye just a, a just half of a second at most. And you're going to pick him off. You can catch him looking at the, at the uh, catcher. So he's picking, look, he's looking for the signs. Now's when you got to throw. When the signs are being flashed, that's when you got to throw the first. And there he goes. He saw the curveball. Yeah, he right. yeah, he saw it bigger than heck. Right there. Saw the curveball took off. Right breaking. Mike Davis fouled it off. Now Morton steps off. Struck him out. To end the top of the sixth inning. Now a one run ball game. Back to PNC Park into the bottom of the sixth inning. Pirates leading two to one now as David Wright singled home Eric Young. And meanwhile, Jeremy Hefner has set down 13 straight since the Alvarez first inning homer. Now the Pirates uh, have only got a couple of hits. Now luckily, came together. One of them was a home run.
And bounce to David Wright. He's been all over the place. 14 in a row retired by Hefner. As advertised, let's find young right-hander of the New York Mets, Jeremy Hefner. He's paired up to no good. No, no, no good. good. Yeah. He is up to no good. I hope so. He's bounced out twice. Right made a fine play on him in the third. Yeah, that's your strike one curveball. Big breaker, not much on it. You throw it right down the middle. Not many guys are wanting to hit the curveball first pitch. And you get ahead, then you got to throw the next one out of the strike zone, which you did. It's pretty basic one on one stuff, but that's what pitching is basic. You don't have to be, you don't have to be a rocket scientist, scientist to pitch. Marte down the left field line. Now it's Marte's turn to Marte. As Young picks it up. It's a double for Marte with one away. The first breaking ball for a strike that tried to throw one down so he could chase it. But then came back with another one. I believe. Yeah. Three in a row. Something different. Well, Basic stuff. Like yeah. You said. Yeah. Three slow hooks in a row. You know, the first one you're going to get that strike. They're going to look at that. But then after that, you've seen it. Especially when he laid off the bad one. You, you, now you know oh, he's seen it pretty good. I think he brought it right back up in the strike zone for him. Hammer down the line. It is a crowded ballpark tonight. Here tonight, stolen base leaders brought to you by Red Two. That'd be a great time right now to get the third. Huh? The score back of Everett Cabrera, the Padres for the league lead. Murphy coming in behind the back, bothering him a little bit. Sure, he can't get a good jump. Tabata chasing that curveball. Yeah, you can see Murphy standing right almost behind second base. See him start moving in. Uh, that really makes it tough to get a jump as a base runner. It's kind of a TV shot. You, you get the look of, of what the pitcher is going to see when he glances back. There's his second baseman. He's right in line with the bag. Easy for him to just take a couple quick steps in, and he's right there to accept the throw. Well, Marte, he, he kind of has to play it like, like he's being held on first. And now caught between oh. third. After didn't know what to do, he finally throws to third. They've got Marte, and he will be tagged. A comebacker, Marte is retired. Uh, Marte, not a, a good bit of base running there, obviously, but I thought they were going to let him off the hook. Now you want to move up on a ball hit to your left, but you do have to make sure it gets by the pitcher, and he didn't wait for that. It was almost like Hefner looked but didn't see. That was really odd. I wonder if if Ike Davis, the first baseman, was maybe you know, continuing the point. You, you know, go right. there, go there, because he, he looked back and acted like he never saw him, and then turned to make the throw to first. And then either somebody was yelling at him or something. And he changed his mind. Shortstop Quintanilla guns it to second, so the force there, and that does it for the Bucks through six, two one Pittsburgh.
PNC Bank teaming up to bring you discounted PNC check card dates every Friday and weekday matinee game this season. All PNC Bank customers using their check cards get up to $10 off outfield box, lower outfield, outfield reserve, or grandstand seats. Purchase tickets at the PNC Park ticket windows or go to pirates.com slash PNC check card. Marlon Bird leads off. He is 0 for 2. Seventh inning, 2 1. And a liner to Pedro Alvarez. One pitch, one out in the seventh inning. Well, Charlie Martin making his sixth start of the season. Has done outstanding work. David Wright, a couple of hits, including an RBI single in the sixth inning. Pedro Alvarez, 24th home run of the season. Came in the first, gave the Pirates a 2 0 lead. Starling Marte is one for three. The Pirates have been out hit five to three, but lead two to one. Along with Bob Walk, Robbie and Spikowski, I'm Greg Brown, along with Dash. Greg Simkovich, stage manager. And the entire Gypsy crew in the trailer. Andy Costco and Pete Toma controlling things down there. 2 0 on Neuenheis. He's bounced out and popped up. And a fly ball hit deep. Top of the back. Toward the wall. And it's a tie game on a 2-0 pitch. Kirk Neuenheis. Home run number three. It's two all in the seventh. Fell behind and the left he got him. Reaction, he could tell. But they were trying to go inside. Got it in there and he turned on it. Now it's a new ball game. There's Anthony Recker. Look out. That hit the stones. It's going to have a deck in it. Recker's decided that. It's broke. No one won the count, and that is the third home run that Morton has allowed, and this is sixth start. Anthony Recker singled to right field in the fifth and struck out his first AB against Morton. Nothing in two on Anthony Recker. Bullpen action for both the Pirates and the Mets. There's a strike three called on Recker. Third punch out for Charlie Morton. Drops his curveball in there. Just perfect. Outside half of the plate, right above the knees. Tony Watson for the Pirates. Scott Rice, lefty for the Mets. Pedro Alvarez due up to a lead off the bottom of the seventh. Popped up and out of play. Thumbs up for that play. <laughs> Everybody coming over. High fives everywhere. Oh, don't knock him over. Yeah. <laughs> kind of happy. I never seen anybody that happy. And a strike on Quintanilla. Mets getting a one out home run from Newen Weiss. Newen Heiss, who hits his third home run of the season.
two and two on Omar Quintanilla. Scott Rice. That's bullpen has been outstanding this month. 170 ERA in July. Three and two. Charlie had tried to go back door this breaking ball. Targets on the outside corner, and that's where he's trying to bring it over. The pitcher is on deck, Hefner. And another strikeout. Back to back for Charlie Morton following the home run that tied the game by Neuenheis. We'll keep it right here. Bottom of the seventh inning, and Pedro Alvarez leads off. He gave the Pirates a 2 0 lead in the first with his 24th home run of the season. He now has a nine game hitting streak going. Hefner facing the four, five, six men. He retired 14 in a row before a Marte double. And there's a fly ball hit the other way to Young. Bunch some hits together. Mm -hmm. Hefner has really started to figure this thing out. This uh, former 10th round pick of the Padres six years ago. A couple years ago, the Pirates claimed him off waivers from the Padres. They had him on their 40 man roster for less than a month, and then they traded for Jermichael Navarro. The Royals had to make room, so they took off Hefner, and the Mets claimed him December 12, 2011. He made 26 appearances, 13 starts last year, had a 5.09 ERA. A product of Oral Roberts University. Dan Worthen, the pitching coach, working with the Hefner. We heard Robbie and Spikowski talking about the, some of the tweaking they've done with the Hefner windup. Perkins, Oklahoma. Ball two strikes, and that's you know, some talent uh, pitching wise. Upper levels of the minors. And it might not be too long before they are uh, back in the thick of things competing. T 
Two and two on Russell Martin. And now three and two. Hefner has not walked a batter tonight. He's walked 24 unintentionally in 107 innings this season. Jones to follow. And still three and two. See the pitch count. In very good shape. One of the goals I have there because you go through a whole game without the same pitch count. Yeah. Try Sunday. Right. Strike out number three. On tonight's all new Inside Pirates Baseball, the Bucks rake in the most all star selections since the 1981 team. See how Francisco Liriano puts on a show during batting practice. Recap our plays of the week and much more Inside Pirates Baseball is presented by Allegheny Sports Medicine. It debuts tonight after Pirates post game here on Root Sports. Is Francisco Liriano. Who he likes this National H stuff. Yes, he does. Four hits, seven innings of shutout ball, combining with Justin Wilson and Jean Marc Gomez to blank the A's on Wednesday. Now, Clint Hurdle said they're likely to rearrange the order of the rotation following the All Star break. And there's a high fly ball. Again, Jones gets under it. He just missed two home runs tonight. Pirates down in order through seven. It's still 2-2. Two, two. Those beautiful shots courtesy of our HGH cam. 2 2 ball game. On to the eighth inning. Along the Allegheny. Antique. Is that old, you think? Looked old. It, it did, it did, yep. Mark Melanson comes on for the eighth. Beautiful numbers there. Yeah, that's gotta be. Really. Well, that's it. After uh, Morton went seven innings, gave up a couple of runs on six hits. Mark Melanson. Try and keep this a tie game, and Pirates will try to do it against the bullpen as Giordani Valdespin bats for Hefner, who went seven, gave up the two run homer to Pedro Alvarez, one of just three hits. 
There's a win to be had by somebody for the pin. Pirates are barking. Home plate umpire Larry Vanover. Russell Martin pointing. Here comes Clint Hurdle. Well, the guy with the best view uh, is probably the third base umpire. He's looking right down that third base line, and he can see if this ball uh, hit him out in front of the plate, which it definitely did. I mean, don't need much of a replay to see that. That was definitely way out in front. I thought it was going to be close. That didn't even look close to me. No. I mean, he ran forward before yep. he made contact with the ball. I don't know how they missed that. I'm surprised that, uh, at the very least, uh, Clint Hurdle wasn't able to convince Van Over to get some help. So it's one ball, one strike on Valdespin. When, when he made contact with the ball, his front foot was already. Beyond the front line of the batter's box, it was that far out in the fair territory. When the ball hit the bat, and it was even further than that when the ball hit his body. It's another beautiful picture of this spectacular ballpark as the sun sets. Two and two on Valdespin. That's for Hefner. Valdespin heard it from his manager and some of the, the players back in May when he hit a pinch hit home run off of uh, Jose Contreras. His team was down a bunch in the ninth inning. And he strikes out. One up and one down for Mark Melanson. That's there, the pinch hitter. Down and in. Mark Melanson, certainly an all star caliber first half this season. 085 ERA, the lowest among National League relievers. Strike on Eric Young Jr., who has two of the six Mets hits. He scored the tying run. David Wright pops single with two outs in the sixth. One ball, one strike. And the other way foul. Somebody topples over. Not long. Not long. Look at that. He gave it to a Mets fan. That was a youngster. You got it. You got it. Nope. Missed it. So. Ah, that hurt. That's concrete. There you go. Now. There you go. Down on strikes goes Young. Back to back K's for Mark the Shark. I know who that guy was too, by the way. Was number 36. The strikeout pitch. Curveball. Part of the sellout crowd, the seventh sellout. Of the season, 39,036. Friday night. So the Pirates and the Mets game one of three. And a line single for Daniel Murphy to left. And it will bring up David Wright.
Bowen here might hang with Wright for a few years. A few years? I thought you were say a few, no, a few more years. innings. I don't think anybody's going to forget. I'm still giving it to him every time he comes to the plate. Two for three in his career against Melanson with a couple of walks and a homer. All one. Good first pitch. Third in the National League, 403 on base percentage. He's ninth in slugging. Has a 12 game hitting streak. Two more hits tonight for Wright. Can you see it? Over 39,000. Seventh sellout. Right to right field. Top of the coming in. And makes the catch and then slides. Holds onto the ball after making the catch. Well, we've seen some outfielders drop some balls going into that feet first slide recently, but the top of able to hang on the catch. Pittsburgh Pirates and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Pittsburgh Pirates. 2 2 going to the bottom of the eighth inning at PNC Park. So many kids. Yeah, yeah. It's everywhere tonight. Kids of all ages. Yep. There's the ballpark. Everybody's a kid. Let's we'll see their Buckos win a ball game late. Going to the bottom of the eighth inning, and veteran David Ardsma is now on the mound. He was with the Marlins organization earlier this season. Score now. Gurley a save. Oh, that'd be great. I'd rather Gurley get a save than a win. Yeah. So it's Mercer, Barmas, and then a pinch hitter against Ardsma. Unscored upon in 11 of 15 appearances. Signed on May the 20th. He was with the Marlins AAA affiliate in New Orleans and released in the middle of May. There he is. All star closer.
Mercer last time up lined out to first baseman Ike Davis. Bounced to shortstop his first at bat. And hits this one in the air to center. Ruinheis. First out. In the hits. bottom of the eighth. He hits. He a bunch of hits. Rely on the home run all the time. The last game we played. A lot of hits together, same inning. Hit the runners in scoring position. That's the key. Of course, if somebody hits one out of here, I'm not going to complain. But that's definitely something that you look at uh, on the offensive stat sheet with this club. Is that they're not too bad when it comes to hitting home runs. They're up up with the the upper echelon, but when it comes to scoring runs, they're at the bottom. Not all the way, but rather on the low side. And what that tell you is that not scoring enough runs other than when we go deep. That'll get better at uh, knocking them in when they're at second and third. Snyder to pinch hit. And a pop up toward right. Marlon Bird. Is a play to fly ball outs. See if Travis Snyder can't get something going here. He's got a pinch hit home run, doesn't he? Yes, he has. We have two. Travis Snyder back May the 12th against the Cubs. Hardsma, a former Cubs pitcher. That's what you want to be thinking right now if you're Snyder and you get the uh, count in your favor. Say three and one, some, something in those lines where you can take a chance. Think home run. Think about that Clemente wall. Go out there and Take a big swing, try to put it over. And the reason I say that is, is there's two outs. It's going to kind of lighten out a bunch of hits. One and two. Strikes out the pinch hitter Snyder and the Bucks go down again. One, two, three, and it's on to the ninth. And Jason Grilly will come on and try and keep it tied.
Safety Park. Jason Grilly in for a non-safe situation. Earlier this week, Jason Grilly received a pretty cool package in the mail, and it came from Seattle, where the Pirates a couple weeks ago played a two-game series against the Mariners. Grilly visited the Pearl Jam warehouse and stocked up on a ton of merchandise. If you don't uh, know very much about Jason Grilly, you'll find out soon once you do. He is a diehard Eddie Vedder, and Pearl Jam fan is Grilly. So he had a chance to take a visit. He went there one day. Bucks PR guy Jim Trudinich took a trip there another day, and they had a good time, and Grilly stocked up so much so, Greg and Bob, that he couldn't bring it all home with him and had to have it shipped. So there he is, about a third of his locker taken up with Pearl Jam stuff right now, and I don't think there's any chance he cleans out locker uh, cleans that locker out before the end of the season so it'll be there a while if you guys want to check it out right all right a uh, guy that uh, for a while Robbie uh, was used to getting out of jams as a middle reliever for many years a setup man last season for Joel Hanrahan as Ike Davis leads off and takes ball one Davis has walked grounded out and struck out Marlon Bird to follow, and then Nguyen Heisu homered to tie this game in the seventh. That's behind 2 0. Oh. He really pitched a scoreless ninth inning on Tuesday night. Again, the Pirates fell two to one. And a strike on Ike Davis. Davis had 32 homers last year, drove in 90, hit just 227. And bounced back up the middle, and then a shortstop, Barnes. Retires Ike Davis. Sort of good defensive positioning on the Pirates' part. Putting Marmus right up the middle so he had plenty of time to range to that side of the back. That first out. He's easily able to eat that one up. Nice play to retire Davis. Leva works with the infielders. To go over all those spray charts before the game. Make sure he, he knows and everybody else knows where they're supposed to be, depending on who's up. Marte there to retire Bird. Marlon Bird tonight 0 for 4. And now Newen Heiss. A 2 2 ball game. The Pirates will have the top of their order due up in the bottom of the ninth. Oh, nice thinking bunt. Strike one. Jason Grilly be joining three teammates in New York Tuesday night, but first order of business is to get this final out. Ball and a strike on Newen Heiss. The Pirates need to win a series before the break. Mm -hmm. I think that's a pretty important. Goal for this team. Been so good at that this year, winning all the series that they've been in, and most of them. And not of late, though. And you don't want to go into that break, I think, with that sour taste in your mouth. I'm sure Clint would love to see the club take two out of three. They lost two out of three uh, to the Phillies, the Cubs. And the Oakland A's. 
So now three and one. Nice. Perhaps being very careful to him. Maybe uh, intentional on Grilly's part. He's been known to do that. As he uh, perhaps sees a better matchup with Wrecker. Well, anytime you can lose a game with one swing, you're certainly not going to give in with two outs, nobody on, and you know, a 3 2 count. You're going to try and make a pitcher's pitch. Um, you know, might not be by design to throw ball four, but uh, if you're going to get beat, it's going to be you know, something that's right on the edge or a ball. There's no room for error right now. Wrecker has struck out twice and singled. The breaking pitch from Gurley for strike two. Oh, and two on Anthony Wrecker. Goes back to that breaking ball, make sure it's off the plate away. Ideally, you don't want to throw a breaking ball for a strike. Struck him out looking. Yeah, one with the fastball. That was on the outside corner, it looked like. So here we go to the bottom of the ninth inning. Starling Marte will lead things off. He'll be followed by Jose Tabata and then Andrew McCutcheon. To the bottom of the ninth inning. Well, we'd like to do that, wouldn't we? Walk off fashion. It's always uh, fun to see that happen, but especially when you got a packed house like it is tonight. AT&T tweet from Bud B. John, 32 runs, runs, runs. A Marte Parte. Don't need that many though. Just uh, just one will do it. One pirate touches home plate. We can raise the Jolly Roger. Five walk off wins by the Bucks this season. The last one was uh, June the 30th at that 14 inning ball game. Russell Martin with the walk off. Get 
Marte on him. Put him at first. Ooh, oh, almost got a almost piece of the got jersey. I'm going to put him at first. One count. Marte faces David Archma. Sellout crowd, 39,036. What a view that is standing there. Time to watch the ball game. Everybody loves it. The things are always packed, whether it's a sellout or not, it seems like one of the favorite vantage points. Fans standing along the railing there. Two and two. Down the line and left. Yeah. This is going to be at least one. He's trying for two. Here's the throw. Is he is there with a double for Sterling Marte in the bottom of the ninth. They won a Marte tonight. What an exciting player. It, it, it just continues to amaze as the season goes along. You're desperate to uh, you know, get a base runner set the table. Ideally, best case scenario here to get something in is a leadoff double. He comes through. Two strikes. And he is off. Step out of the box. He knew he wanted a double. Wanted to get to the back. He always slides head first that back uh, corner. It but somehow, puts the anchor down. He somehow. always stays on the base. A lot of guys will come off, not Marte. Unlike Niger Morgan a few years ago, who had all kinds of trouble with that head for a slide. Really could get the W. Tabata, they're thinking bunt. Corners are in. McCutcheon on deck. It's bunted right to David Wright. And Marte moves up 90 feet. Sacrifice accomplished. Excellent bunt by Tabata. Firm right to the third baseman. That's the way you do it. Now we decide. We find out what Terry Collins decides to do. He has McCutcheon, then Alvarez. There's the bunt. You might think they're going to walk two guys intentionally back to back here. Here comes the first intentional walk. They won't face McCutcheon, and you've got to believe they're not going to pitch to Alvarez either. Take their chances with Russell Martin. Maybe try and get him to hit into a double play. We'll see what Terry Collins decides after they walk McCutcheon intentionally. And he does have a lefty loosening in the bullpen. So maybe I might think he can come in and strike out Alvarez, yeah. Alvarez with a left-hander. We've seen Pedro of late though. Yeah, you know, hang in pretty good on lefties and use the opposite field. Go the other way, left center. I think Terry Collins is going to make this move. He's going to foot up on that dugout step, and here he comes. So it will be up to Alvarez to try and win the game against a left-handed pitcher. After the intentional walk is issued to Andrew McCutcheon. You know what, though. Let me ask you this. He's setting up a double play. What if McCutcheon takes off for second? Yeah. Will they even try it? That's a great to thrust. throw through to second. Let's see if they they don't decide. Talk about the Pirates if they don't decide to do that with McCutcheon. Scott Rice coming on.
against the left hander Scott Rice. Alvarez has three hits in his last four at bats versus left handed pitching. The numbers for Scott Rice, who did not face Alvarez in that four game series in New York in mid May. Been busy 48 appearances. Lefty's hitting just 175 against him. 14 hits and 80 at bats. Very good. If you look down at the field right now, you can see where Wright is way off third base. I mean, Marte could get yeah. a tremendous jump on any kind of a double steal action. Well, there, there's no way they would throw down. No, I mean, that. Look at the well, jump. Now right moves way over toward third. It tries not to. Somebody must have told him you can't play over there. Ball one. Let's let's go. Pedro chance here at PNC Park. And their all-star third baseman who hit a two-run homer in the first off the starter Hefner is 24th. And he's trying to win it here in the bottom of the ninth inning. Oh. Strike right there, one and one. Terry Collins has a righty up in the bullpen again. It's Greg Burke. Perhaps to face Martin should Rice retire Alvarez. Jason Grilly, a scoreless top of the ninth, in line to get the W. One All Star looking at another. One and two. Got a piece of it. So that piece of record. One and two, the count remains on Alvarez. Intentional walk to McCutcheon, and let's bring in the lefty Scott Rice to try and get Pedro Alvarez. I keep looking over there and nodding yes to his dugout. Getting the uh, make some instructions on uh, what they wanted to do with the baseball in case McCutcheon runs. And he got him. Big strikeout for Scott Rice for the second out. And here comes Terry Collins again. He does want the right hander. To face Russell Martin. Scott Rice gets the big strikeout of Alvarez. A little slider just a little bit off the plate down and away. Well pitched. Greg Burke coming on. And we'll be back. See if Russell Martin can deliver with two outs.
W out of their buckos. In the bottom of the ninth, but now with two outs. Need a hero, huh? Well, he's uh, been involved in three of the five walk-offs this year, two singles and an air. We're talking about Russell Martin as he faces Greg Burke. Up and down four times this season. Big league club at 33 AAA. hits and 25 innings. First and third and two outs. Martin had the game winning single in the bottom of the 14th, June the 30th. Everybody playing back, even at first base. McCutcheon now will take second, uncontested. See yet another pitching change because Terry Collins' other lefty is loosening in the bullpen with Garrett Jones on deck. And you would think he wouldn't face Jones. Though. Two and one. And you would think that they would counter with Gabby Sanchez, but maybe it won't get to that point. Maybe uh, Martin can. Walk it off right here, two and one. They're ready to pour over the top of that upper rail. They're going to mob somebody out there. Three and one. That's a good eye laying off that one. Jones probably does not bat in this inning. Three and one. Full count. Padre Greg Burke spent most of the 2009 season with San Diego. Starling Marte a double to lead things off. He's at third. Martin tries to get him home. Lays off. Check swing. Appeal. No. And they're loaded. And here comes Terry Collins again. A double switch. In this case, he's going to go to Larry Vanover before he brings in his other lefty that he has available. And once he is announced, we can presume that Gabby Sanchez would pinch hit, but we'll see if that's what Clint Hurdle decides to do as the Pirates have now loaded the bases with two outs in the bottom of the ninth. Trying to win it for the sellout.
tie game. A couple of changes. Juan Ligares comes on to play center field. He'll bat in the ninth spot of the order. And the new pitcher is the lefty Josh Edgen. His 28th appearance. 23 innings and in 28 appearances. Something that uh, you usually see with lefties. That's more appearances and innings pitched. And the same was true of Scott Rice. Eddie yeah. Sanchez pinch hitting. Sanchez 32 career RBIs against the Mets. That's the most for Sanchez against any club. This former Marlin career 322 hitter against New York. He's just two for 16 as a pinch hitter this season. But he is batting 288 against lefties, trying to get that man home. All one. Off hit for him. Ball two. Sick <laughs> ball. He's fired up. Two and zero oh on the pinch hitter Gabby Sanchez. Bounce to the right side, and we are going extra innings here in Pittsburgh. It's on to the tenth. Two-two game. All season long, Jack Link's beef jerky feed your wild side, right? How wild are you feeling right now? What are you doing reading that promo? You're not a promo reader. Uh, I'm a, I am an extra inning. So it's, it's in my contract. You know that. I did, I did know that. Well, Gabby Sanchez stays in the game to play first. And the new pitcher, Tony Watson. Pirates, uh, Tony's numbers. Pirates are just a, an absolute golden opportunity with that leadoff double. And Marte, all his speed, and could not turn it into just even just a one one run. So Marte just run in, touch the plate. Bucks are six and five in extra innings this season. The Mets are five and six. Over an eight-game stretch from July the first. Through July the 8th, they played three extra inning games. 13 innings on July the 1st. 15 innings 
July the 4th and 16 innings in San Francisco. And that game was on Monday. Road weary New York Mets. A trip that started in Milwaukee. And they won two or three against the Brewers and then swept the Giants in San Francisco. Off day for them yesterday. One and one on Quintanilla. He's 0 for 3. Watson ahead of Quintanilla, 1 and 2. Pirates last played an extra inning game on Sunday against the Cubs. They lost in 11 innings, four to three at Wrigley. Ben Hurdle had uh, Charlie Morton start tonight, who had seven, gave up two runs. Melanson scoreless eight, really a scoreless ninth. Foul ball, and stays one and two. The bat, I'm assuming. Certainly hit something. Oh. Martin Man. kept it there for an extra couple of seconds, did not get the call. Going to see why he left it there. It was a strike. Beautiful pitch. And to right. One out. Tony Watson gets the fly ball. Tabata makes the play, and now. Juan Ligares, who came on as part of the double switch out in center field. Strike one. And out in front, 0 and 2. Watson has been scored upon just a couple of times his last 13 games, covering 18 innings. Opponents hitting under 200 against him. 95, 1 and 2. And that's his. Uh... That's his strength. That's his bread and butter pitch when he goes inside to those right handers with the fastball. This time he's going away. Trying to. Reaching out and that's going to be a base hit. Two strike single to right for Ligares. Base hit. Here's Eric Young. No bat right handed. He's been much better this season as a right handed hitter. He was two for three against the right handed starter Morton. Struck out against Melanson in the eighth. Twenty eight year old Eric Young Jr.
designated for assignment by the Rockies and picked up by the Mets. Watson watching Lagares. Young Jr. And Watson falls behind two and oh. Drafted by the Rockies. Spent parts of five seasons in the big leagues with Colorado. He has been a spark plug for the Mets since arriving. He's got two hits tonight with a run scored. And now Watson falls behind three balls, no strikes. Pitchers, for the most part, have been throwing a lot of strikes tonight, both clubs. One of the reasons why there's been so little offense. Taken all the way on that 3 0 pitch. Probably have the green light now, you would think. But that doesn't mean just swing at anything. I mean, be very selective. But if you do get the pitch you're looking for, go ahead and give it a run. Can't believe that was what he was looking for. Was he looking for a pitch outside? <laughs> Hard to believe. That was right out there where the first three were that he took. Really. You can see where the first three were, and then that's he, he, did, he took those, but then he got three one. He got the green light, and he just didn't have the you know the, the patience. You know, a veteran, good veteran hitter takes ball four there. He, he took the first three. Why wouldn't he take fourth? Now he taps one toward second. They get one as Tony Watson decided not to grab it or not to attempt to. Yeah, it's going right to second base. Just. Let it go. Yeah. It's like Barmas and Mercer talking over uh, if they could have done anything different as far as getting to the ball a little quicker. Two down now, the left handed hitter, Daniel Murphy. One for four tonight. Ball one. Kirk Newen Heiss hit a one out home run off Charlie Morton in the seventh inning. Tied the game at two. Down the line and left. Foul. That one could have been a problem. That gets down by the foul pole. You don't know what kind of crazy hop you might get off that angled wall. Can do different things. We've seen that. If Marte would have struggled with it, it could have been a run. And to left field for Murphy. First and second. And here's David Wright. Wright has a couple of hits tonight, an RBI single. This crowd will not be happy if he does anything here. Wright is hitting 319 with men in scoring position this season. Big time challenge here for. Tony Watson. 
Brad Hurdle checks in on the bullpen foam. Ryan Morris up. It's going to go to Morris. Brian Morris will try and get David Wright with two on and two outs in the top of the 10th inning. The righty, Morris coming on. Top of the 10th with two outs. They have two on. David Wright coming to the plate. He'll face the righty, Brian Morris. And Brian's numbers on this season. This will be 27th appearance for Brian. Many times he's had to go more than an inning. He's close to 40 innings. That's 26 games. Got to get one hitter, and 76% uh, of the time he's got the first one he's faced. That's the important one right now, right in front of him. Tony Watson back in the dugout after giving up a couple of hits. David Wright facing Brian Morris. That's captain. Now with a 12 game hitting streak, 44 RBIs on the year. to gun down toward first. Sanchez well off the line. One ball no strikes on David Wright. Careful, everything he throws, he needs to stay at the edge of the strike zone. Doesn't matter now as far as uh, if you walk anybody, has that base open, even on its third base. You can afford to be very careful. Check swing, appeal. Yes, says the first base umpire, Brian Gorman. David Wright, not happy with that one. One and two. The head of the bat gets out there. Well, it was a tough one. I don't know, Greg. But I like it anyway. One ball, two strikes. Two and two. The block by Martin. 
Getting up there and swallow that one up. So Young remains in second. That was right, really overthrowing that breaking pitch. Tried to throw it too hard. Ryan Morris with the potential go ahead run in scoring position. The very speedy Eric Young. A red hot David Wright at the plate. Look out. Three and two. And if that would have been on the inside corner, they had it. That was an excellent pitch after all those breaking balls. Just got a little too far inside. And uh, he did his best to put something on that one. Now that's a velocity to it. Young and Murphy will take off on this pitch to David Wright. Toward right center. Here comes McCutcheon. There. Morris gets a gigantic out. The final out of the top of the 10 after nine and a half. Still 2 2. Bottom of the 10th inning, Jordy Mercer leads off against Josh Edgen, who got out of that jam in the bottom of the ninth by getting Gabby Sanchez to ground out. And Mercer takes ball one. He's 0 for 3. Hefner, Artsma, Rice, Burke, and Edgen for the Mets, who've won four in a row coming into this game. Shallow right. Whoa! Gonna be a, some problems there. You could see it coming. Laugh now. Murphy and Bird. We saw the crowd play a role in a game earlier this season where a ball was dropped in shallow right, similar to this one. Bird's looking, like nobody saying anything. Said, so, okay, you can watch Bird's lips the whole way. He never said a word. And that's what Murphy's listening for. He's listening for the outfielder just one time to say I got it so that he knows he can peel out of there and there won't be a collision. The outfielder has to take charge and, uh, and yell loud and multiple times if necessary. I have it so that that infielder can move away. It's always a very tough play for him to make.
ball one strike. Up two and one. Barnes 0 for three. is aboard with one out and Josh Harrison will pinch hit. Bob's going to hit just enough of this ball on the outside part of the plate. Just enough so that it wouldn't carry. That's the key there is he wants to get down in a hurry. Clear the infield but get down in front of the outfielder. The outfield in these late situations, they're playing a little bit deeper than normal. Guarding against a double, although in right field you really can't play all that deep here because it's not that far to the wall. It definitely comes into play in left. If you get back by the uh, warning track, there's some acreage in front of you. Ball on Josh Harrison recalled from Triple A. Neil Walker was placed on the disabled list on Tuesday. He pinch hit Tuesday night and grounded out. Been up and down a handful of times this season. Out of play. Harrison was hitting 317 at Indianapolis and. Named to the International League All-Star team. Led the Indianapolis Indians with 29 doubles at the time of his recall. Mother's Day walk-off last year against Houston. It'll be tough to walk off here unless it's one over the wall. Trying to get on board. Moving along. With Marte on deck. Two and two on Harrison against the lefty Edgen. Edgen really staying on the outside edge. Central Pennsylvania native. Scott Edgen facing Josh Harrison with Barmas on at first. Shows a pretty good control. He was away, 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 away. For the first part of this at bat, and then uh, the pitch called inside for the first time, and boom, put it right in there on the hands. Is in his second year of the big leagues. Time was called. Just as Edgen was about ready to deliver the pitch. Two and two. Coming back in. You ready, Jay? Hey, sorry. Harrison hit 361 against lefties this season at Triple A, Indianapolis. It's a full count with Barmas on first base and one out in the bottom of the tenth.
Stays three and two, and that'll hurt. So far, it's good looks. And not to forget Barmas at first. That's kind of what that was. That would be a little reminder that they have. No, you're over there. Also, just in case, this might have been one, one, three, two, pick. And he's going, and it's chopped towards short, so they won't have a play there. And that is the second out. Six, three, for the put out. And Charlie Marte will bat for the fifth time. His last two times up, he's doubled to left. Now, they're going to put Marte on. Uh, Tama has not hit lefties well at all this season, so this is a kind of understandable. Splits. And Marte absolutely just crushes lefties. Tobin, on the other hand, that's been a little bit of a weakness for him. 243 average this season for Tabata. Against lefties. Whereas uh, in the past, before this year, that was a strength for Tabata. Dan Worth and talk things over here with uh, his second year pitcher. Terry Collins has gone to his bullpen four times. Used four different relievers in the ninth inning. Well, he's got a right hander ready for McCutcheon if it comes to that. So a little bit unusual then, huh? That uh, he would stick, as you said, with the lefty because of those numbers. The top of And the top has brought that up a little bit too of late. So I, I looked at those uh, splits. Uh, I guess a couple of weeks ago he was hitting below 200 versus left-hand pitching. But this is a little bit against the book, but because of those numbers, Bob talked about those splits. He yeah, well, I Terry think Collins much, stays with the left. It's as much to do with. Oh, I see what you're saying. But walking Marte, uh, if he's going to stay with the lefty, then that was kind of a no-brainer. Marte hits lefties, which aren't good. Ball one. I think that Terry also is maybe taking the, the long view here, thinking, well, this game might go a while. I'd like to keep this. Yeah, I don't want to burn yeah. through the. All of my bullpen right away. Well, if anybody knows about long extra innings, it's Terry Collins. And it's two balls and no strikes. But if he loses Tabra to a base on balls, then I would think that, that would have to force his hand, wouldn't you think? I would think so, yeah. Otherwise, why every yeah. warm up a right hander right. if you're not going to use him for that guy? 2 and 0 oh on Tabra. And now it's 3-0. Uh, there are two outs, so a base hit 
you think, well, I'm going to score the run. Not necessarily. Barmas does not run all that well. And the outfield shallow enough that there would be a play at the plate. You would think. But it may come to McCutcheon. It's 3 0 on Tabata. Taking all the way, 3 and 1. Tabata was asked to bunt his last time up, sacrificed, moved Marte to third. Reached on an infield single in the first inning with one out and was aboard when Alvarez homered with two outs in that first inning. Bucks haven't scored since. The Mets scored a run in the sixth, the tying run in the seventh. And now it's three and two. Now Barmas will get an early jump. Three and two the count. Bounce towards short. Quintanilla on the first. And we will head to the eleventh inning. Still not enough at two. Your wild side. I noticed uh, Bob's different inflection there, the second read. It's for luck. It's all is for luck. For luck? Yeah. Well, I, I've studied the promo readers for most of my adult I life. I know that. You're and I've tried fixated to learn, on these tried promo to readers. Learn from them. And normally I see the second time on, the, on a read that will change it a little Do you think bit. they do it for luck? No. Well, no. Why do they do that? Um, like, do you actually think that people remembered it, your their profession? So they, oh. that's why they do it. Do you think that they remembered your first read well enough to have noticed this second read inflection change? Obviously, you did. Absolutely, I've studied promo readers my <laughs> whole career. Uh, back to the game. Vin Mazzaro Hard. takes us, uh, delivers a strike to Ike Davis, who. Bats here to lead off the 11th. And Mazzaro follows Brian Morris, who got the last out of the 10th. It's Davis, then Bird, and then the pitcher, Edgen, due up here in the 11th. And Mazzaro and a bunch of his teammates were out at the Fox Chapel Golf Club yesterday for Pirates Charities. That hurdle was certainly there with his dad, big contributor, the folks at uh, AGH, title sponsor of the event. And Jay Burnett dropped by the, the golf course. 
One ball and two strikes. One and two. Two balls, two strikes. Davis has walked, grounded out, struck out, and bounced to short. Stays two and two. Former first round pick, Mike Davis. Son of the former big league pitcher Ron Davis. A dangerous type hitter. You know, you know that the batting average is not where he would, I'm sure, like it, but he, he has that power, and you got to be very careful with it. Probably because he's a son of a pitcher that can't get the batting average up. That's right. That's right. Former Yankee twin, Cub, and Giant. Late 70s into the 80s, and he goes down swinging. Lazaro, going to hold your breath sometimes with power guys in these extra inning ball games. Kinda left the strike zone. So backup slider didn't really do a whole lot, just stayed up there and uh, spun, stayed outside. When there's a power hitter up there, it, it doesn't matter really what the bad batting average is. When it's extra innings, tie game, you're, you know that they have that ability, one swing, and uh, they can put you up or in the game. Take a little bit of a, a sigh of relief when you get by one of those type guys, like Mike Davis. And here's their home run leader, Marlon Bird. Two and zero. Oh. 35 year old veteran. All star with the Cubs in 2010. To right, there's Tabata. Oh, maybe fighting the lights there. Yep, definitely was. Trying to play it off to the side uh, like a ball in the sun. Tabata able to fight those lights as we take a look at the bullpen. Just uh, one pitcher left for the Bucks now. Uh, John Mar Gomez also available, but uh, Justin Wilson as well. Those two. And for the Mets, we have Herman Gonzalez of Andrew Brown pinch hitting for Josh Edgen. will have McCutcheon Alvarez and Martin do up on the bottom of the 11th. Andrew Brown had a. Two run 13th inning single. To win the ball game for the Mets. On the first of this month. And a strike. 95. Pretty good velocity for Mazzaro. Pop that fastball in there. Everybody in that bullpen has uh, played a major part. Two and two. Justin Wilson, Jean-Marc Gomez. Lone pitchers available. Lefty righty. Two and two. And Vin Mazzaro strikes out a couple. That's just the second time tonight that the Mets have been retired in order, and the first time since the third inning. So, all star Andrew McCutcheon will lead off the bottom of the 11th inning for the Buccos.
2 2 ball game. Pirates have had some opportunities. They've left five men on the last two frames. They will face a new pitcher, Gonzalez Hermin. Was recalled from AAA Las Vegas for the second time this season. A few days ago. And his major league debut earlier this season. Thomas Hermine making his major league debut from the Dominican Republic. He was with the Mets July 2nd through the 5th. And this is his second recall, but his first opportunity to pitch in the big leagues, a non drafted free agent six years ago by the Mets. So McCutcheon Alvarez and Martin will face the rookie. The tie game into the bottom of the 11th inning. McCutcheon 0 for 3. Last time up was walked intentionally. Middle of the lineup. Young pitcher making his debut. A lot of things going uh, in the Pirates' favor this inning. I say you might want to show a little patience uh, to the young guy. Make sure that he's throwing strikes in a kind of a little bit of a nerve-wracking uh, situation for a debut. Bottom of the 11th. Could possibly help us out maybe with a walk or two. He only had 11 walks and 51 strikeouts at the AAA, but his ERA with the Las Vegas 51s was 552. 27 runs given up in 44 innings. Two and one. Andrew McCutcheon had a walk off home run in the 12th inning on May the 14th. Mike Fires of the Milwaukee Brewers. Bottom of the 12th inning leading off that frame against Mike Fires. 4 3 Bucko victory. Leads off the bottom of the 11th here. Three and one. Won the count and a leadoff walk. There we go. What we're looking for. Like you said, Bob, different circumstance altogether for this 25 year old from the Dominican to be in the big leagues for the first time. Several years in the minors. They're trying to settle him down right now, David Wright. You'd be nervous if you were starting, or if you came to a ball game where there's a you know, five or six run uh, deficit one way or another. You'd be nervous for that. But coming in with the, the score tied in the 11th, puts even a little extra pressure, something to think about. Victor Alvarez, a two run first inning home run. And here he is again. He struck out against the lefty Scott Rice in the ninth. Paying attention now to Andrew McCutcheon. Strike call. All-Star game for the first time in his career. And yesterday added to the home run derby list. And he 
he takes the breaking pitch. An all star in his second full major league season. And the only way he can get an extra base hit now is to hit a home run. The outfield all playing very deep with McCutcheon at first. They're definitely guarding against doubles. You can see that look there way out there. You can't get one over their heads unless you put it over the fence. Well, almost looks as though McCutcheon was leaning. Seven home runs and 44 innings in the minors this season. And a strike. Over is asking, sure that wasn't high? Van over shaking his head. And now nodding. You can see where the, where the third pitch was. Top of the strike zone. Maybe three way inside. Two balls, two strikes. You know, threw that fastball open. Yeah. He just reared back and it's just trying to throw as hard as he could. So Martin on deck. McCutcheon swing and a miss. Throw down, not going to be close. So Alvarez strikes out as McCutcheon steals second. And for McCutcheon, that's his 19th stolen base. He didn't hurt himself, did he? Something about wrong with his left hand. Let's see if we can see something in the replay that might have happened to it. Right. That's just cleats. <laughs> we'll keep our fingers crossed that uh, nothing really badly happened. I mean, they're just uh, a little sore. And they're going to walk Russell Martin intentionally to face Gabby Sanchez. Trying to set up a double play ball. Strategy of the intentional walk worked in the ninth. So two on now with one out, and Gabby Sanchez has the Mets look for. An inning ending double play ball. After the walk, steals second. Following the Alvarez strikeout. Sanchez pinch hit in the bottom of the ninth inning with the bases loaded and two outs. He batted for Garrett Jones and he grounded out against the lefty, Josh Edgen. And now he's facing the rookie, Gonzalez Herman. As McCutcheon dances off the bag. Abby Sanchez batting only 200 this season against right handed pitching. Base hit with McCutcheon's speed through the infield. You got a good chance of winning this ball game. 
Gabby Sanchez can deliver. Now you have the outfield point very shallow, what way closer than they would normally be with somebody with with power. They're uh, trying to give themselves some kind of a play at the plate in case there's a base hit. Two and all. Which gives Gabby a, an advantage that if he does hit something fairly deep, they probably won't be able to get back in time to make a catch on it. As long as it's not way high, especially in center field. Gabby Sanchez looking for his second career walk off hit. Three and oh. Mercer is on deck. Bucks and Mets in extra innings. Pirates didn't play an extra inning game in their first 38 contest this year. Now playing extra frames for the 12th time in their last 53 games. That's the man Sanchez is trying to bring home. Three and one. See Gabby get another one right there at that same spot. Fastball fly high inside half. Three and one. He takes a strike and now the count is full. Three balls, two strikes. The man making his major league debut and trying to work his way out of this jam he's created. Struck him out. Gabby Sanchez down on strikes. Two away. Straight change. Looks like it. Broke my, I think uh, the last two pitches look like straight changes. Not breaking, but they're uh, about maybe eight mile an hour slower than the fastball. Up to Jordy Mercer with two away. That Jordy Mercer can deliver. Mercer is 0 for 4. Just a little scratch single. <laughs> Round ball in the hole. Blooper. Anything. A strike. One and one on Mercer. Mercer has bounced to short, lined out to first. He's fly to center and popped to shallow right. Headed up the middle. Shortstop going to try and get there. He won't. Here comes McCutcheon. He will star Jordy Mercer. Mercer me. Walks it off and raise the Jolly Roger in 11. 
That's what we needed, a little ground ball somewhere sneaking through, which is really in this situation, Greg, that's the ideal base hit. Then the outfielder then really can't have any kind of a play. Jordy Mercer. Picks up his first career walk-off hit. The big crowd, really, the first time they've had a chance to really start screaming since that Alvarez home run. The ball's almost just rolling. It's not even bouncing as it hits to the outfield grass. Like I said, though, that is a, a, a great hit to knock in that run. There's no way any outfielder is going to throw out McCutcheon when he has to come that far to get the baseball. Look at Jordy Mercer's reaction. There it is. We well, played a nice game, too. Defensively, he delivers the walk-off hit. McCutcheon with the leadoff walk and then stole second. And the Pirates beat the Mets. And now let's send it out to Paul and T. And 